I was so looking forward to talk about Ibrahim alayhi salam today, but then was distracted by the latest announcement that Roe versus Wade has been overturned. And this is an opportunity not to be missed to remind ourselves of the fact that we actually live in the United States. We haven't gone Amish. We are not cut off from American society. Our children go to the same schools. The problem with us is that most of us have actually not gone to these schools. So we are not quite acculturated in that way. We don't understand the dynamics of life in schools, of the ways in which people are, or our children are, taught, educated, and uh, acculturated. All of that has an impact on who they are and who they will become in the years ahead. So when we find that they have taken a sharp turn left or a sharp turn right, then that is, and it is something that, we was, that was quite unexpected, then that is primarily because of this paucity in our own up, uh, upbringing, our own background. We're not too familiar with the cultural processes of this country. But this will affect us in so many different ways. It will affect us in the upcoming elections. It will affect our educational systems. Who gets funding, who does not get funding. It will further partition the country. And it might even lead America to a new kind of politics that America used to scoff at. A politics that was popular in countries that were considered less democratic. <coughs> Where fists were flying in parliaments. We might get to that. We might get to that. But I'm primarily concerned about those amongst us, and I think that number is growing, who feel that this is ultimately not our fight that we have no truck with Roe versus Wade and its consequences. That if we, stay, if we shelter ourselves in our masajid and our homes, then we will be protected from the blowback of this particular event. History proves us wrong. This idea that Dili Durast, that this is a calamity that is beyond me, that will not affect me, it eventually gets to Dili. If you read the story of the Muslims in Spain and how Spain collapsed, then there too you would find a large number of Muslims who chose total seclusion in the hope that they would, they, they would therefore be protected. That's the number one issue. The number two issue is that this is certainly not a sunnah. The sunnah of the Prophet wasallam shows him to be engaging at all times, at all levels. Read the Quran carefully. Read it with a view to understanding his social engagements. And you will find that Rasulullah wasallam was engaging of his community. And by community, I mean the greater Meccan community. By community, I mean the greater Medinan community and ultimately the global community. All three of these communities, he considered his own at different times in his life and he engaged them and he did so positively. That is the Sunnah. So if we choose to ignore what is going on outside because it is not our business, then we do so to our own detriment, both social as well as theological. We should pay careful attention. A hadith that I shared with you in Ramadan, I think, reminds us of this. Mathalul jalis is salih wa jalis is su' 
كحامل الملسك ونافخ الكير hanging out with a an s a a a a seller a perfume seller and hanging out with an ironsmith have different consequences for you imma an tabta'a minhu aw tajid fihi rihan tayyiba if you hang out with the person who sells itar he would give you some you'd buy some from him or just being there would give you a good smell wa amma nafiq al kir as for the one who is the iron monger hanging out with him will give you a bad smell you might burn yourself or certainly have your clothing burnt so we are at, at a crossroads do we turn america into a dwelling that is filled with essence and good smells is it a brokerage for perfume or is it a place that gives off this bad odor this bad smell that comes from the iron monger so don't be surprised when you get on that plane and leave on a vacation and people actually pick up on that smell notice that when you go into some place for the first 10 seconds or a minute you are quite aware of that smell and then you get desensitized because you become that smell i become that smell and the only people who are aware of the good smell or the bad smell are those we engage with after leaving so this is clear instruction from the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that we ought to either find communities that give us a wholesomeness and avoid communities that are filled with vileness or we make an effort to change it here our task is to make an effort to change it in another hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says mathal al qaim ala hudud allah wal waqi' fihi kamathal qaum istahamu as-safina this is the famous story about people in the boat people on the top of the boat and people at the bottom of the boat not looking at themselves as belonging to one community within a single com- boat whose fate and destiny would be determined by the actions of everyone in there this is the moral of that story if we remain ignorant or indifferent to the consequences of everyone in that boat then whatever happens to that boat will affect ultimately affect us so the story as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us goes on to say that the people at the bottom were thirsty and the people at the top refused to share so they chose the quick option which is to bore a hole in the in, in the hull of the boat and you know where that led all of them to perdition to destruction so events that transpire outside this masjid outside our homes outside our families are events that will ultimately impact us our task in this country is to try and change the destiny the tra- trajectory of those events that is the dawa in which we as muslims in this country ought to be engaged in that is the dawa that we ought to be engaged in go back to the hadith of, of the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we find that it has three very different but interacting patterns in the first three years in makkah rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions engaged in seclusion and spiritual enhancement there was no dawa made to people outside because you have to consolidate and today we still have the mechanisms by which we can consolidate 
but we have to hold on to it. And these are the four arkan of Islam, the a'mal, apart from your iman. In this, in this time and age, in this dark moment in our history, we have to engage invigorated with iman. And that iman comes to us by way of salah, by, by, by way of sawm, by way of zakat, and by way of hajj. If all else fails, then we take this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a witness to the actions we took in order to protect us and our community. So that was the first three years. And the sec then, then the, third year, the, the second period of 10 years comprised of an open confrontation in word alone. In word alone with great diplomacy, with great wisdom. <clears throat> and when that failed, then the Prophet Sallallahu moved to Medina al Munawwara to establish a community, to establish a model that others would be attracted towards. But in every phase of his life, at every stage, the effort was to engage the community to react to the community. When he was in, Mac in Medina, Medina was dominated by Jews. So he handed out, or he extended the olive branch. Let us come together on issues that are common to us. So this is the wisdom we ought to be teaching ourselves. We ought to find classes and programs that focus on this. Is this an Islam that is phase one? Is it phase two or phase three? You have to ask yourself that because the, the, the marketplace is filled with it. There are all kinds of programs out there. Ask yourself, will this prepare me for, for the job market? Will it prepare me for, an, for, for a kind, non-confrontational conversation with my neighbors? If it does not, then certainly it does not serve your purpose, nor the purpose of the community. If you are in need of that, if you, are, if you remain in the first phase, then certainly understand that the first phase was short, it was temporary, it was simply a springboard to get, get into action. And action means engaging the neighbor next door, engaging your schoolmates, engaging people at the workplace, and ultimately engaging American society at large.